Welcome back to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. It's Joe and Santiago. Hi we're, there. We're here today because Santiago is going to interview me and ask me some yep. really personal stuff. Somebody asked me if I would uh, if I would go topless in an interview, so I took my hat <laughs> off and I'm I'm now topless. Yes. All right, shoot. What's your first question, buddy? All right, let's start. So, Joe, where were you born? Ah, that's a good question. I was born in Mobile, Alabama. What? Yeah, and um, so we didn't live there very long. Um, we moved up to Upper State, New York, and uh, in my mother went to college in New York, and so that was the reason we moved up there. And so she wanted to become a teacher, and so uh, my dad took a job with Shell Oil Company, and uh, up in New York. And uh, so we lived there about four or five years, and then we moved to Texas. And so I lived pretty much the rest of my life in Texas. Cool. So how were you raised? How was I raised? Well, um, you know, again, Dad was the Air Force uh, originally. And uh, then, uh, you know, when I was born in Alabama, um, we moved to New York. And, you know, we did a lot of family stuff. We I skated in the winter, you know, that was always a big fun. And, and dad took us around, drove us a lot up to the countryside in New York, up to the mountains and went to the Catskill game farm a lot, went fishing a lot. Dad was a big fisherman. And so dad always, you know, took me out fishing, kept me involved in that, uh, you know, right up to my teen years, make sure I didn't get into trouble. <laughs> he and I would go to the Galveston to the beach every weekend when we lived in Texas and we would fish on the beach all the time. Um, sometimes we'd take charter boats out fishing. Uh, yeah, that dad was always good about making sure I was involved in that or camping, something outdoors all the time. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. All right. So where did you go to school? Well, um, let's see, I started uh, elementary school in, in New York State and, um, and then I moved to Texas for the beginning of the fifth grade, or the end of the fifth grade, I guess. And, uh, and so then I, I, in Houston, I went to middle school and uh, high school in Houston and uh, graduated high school and moved out of Houston quickly, very quickly. And uh, later in life, I decided to go to university. So I went to Mary Hardin Baylor in, in uh, Belton, Texas. University of Mary Hardin Baylor Many, many years ago, it was an all-girls nursing school, and then it slowly became a, basically a religious university, but now it offers uh, degrees in uh, engineering and all kinds of things. Wow. Yeah. That's a long list, yeah. So, you have any brother or sister? Yeah, I have one brother who passed away many years ago, and, uh, and then I have a sister still in the States, yeah. Sorry to hear about your brother. I'm sorry. Appreciate that. So what kind of job do you have in the States? Oh, man. Or jobs? I, jobs. Yeah, wow. I should okay. say jobs. Okay. Uh, I lived a thousand lifetimes through my sure. jobs. So I have uh, I've done a little bit of everything. I, um, I started out in high school, you know, working uh, as a mechanic for Astroworld. When I was a young teenager, a man taught me how to work on lawnmowers and small engines, and, and he would give me... Uh, very small little bit of pay for helping him. And so then I went to work for Astroworld in the summers as a mechanic. And um, years later, I worked for a John Deere dealership in Weimar, Texas, and um, worked for a great man there, a wonderful guy. I uh, wish he was still living because he was really a great guy. Gave me some great opportunities. And um, so, yeah, I did that. And then I uh, later went to work for Snapper Lawnmowers in, uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, it was for one of the distributors, and I uh, sold lawnmowers all over Texas. And I uh, then I worked for a place called Engine House Incorporated in San Antonio, Texas, and I was the uh, field warranty rep for Briggs and Stratton, Tecumseh, Kohler engines, and uh, so I went all over Texas diagnosing engine failures and deciding what was going to be warrantable and what wasn't. That was fun. Um, Left all that to go to work in the software industry uh, down in Sugarland, Texas, and uh, spent a, quite a few years doing that. And 
I eventually became a salesman for another software company and um, wound up um, meeting Lisa down there. And uh, so, yeah, I worked in software. Um, years later, um, Lisa and I started doing some farming enterprises and rabbits and things. I had a, a big farm straight ahead. Our dogs are getting in here and getting all <laughs> in the way. They love to be. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, guys, go on. Go on. Enough. Good. Come on. So, yeah, so um, when I first got out of high school, I, I got a, a farm in um, central South Texas, basically South Texas, a um, little place called Flatonia and Moulton. And um, so I had a farm there. We had cattle and we raised hay and... You know, it was a great experience. Uh, but years later, Lisa and I got into rabbit farming, and um, we moved to a small town called Rogers, Texas. And um, so I, then I became a pastor and while I had a rabbit farm, and I was a bivocational wow. pastor. And so I pastored a couple different churches, and Lisa worked for um, some software companies, and um, which later became Motorola. And so she had a great career with Motorola, uh, became two or three different companies while she worked there. They were bought and sold quite a bit. And um, I got into um, uh, the aquaponics end of farming and built greenhouses on our farm, raised sheep and rabbits and uh, chickens, all kinds of things like that. And uh, while I was doing that, I also was a shooting instructor, um, all sorts of firearms instruction. Uh, but my biggest focus was skeet and sporting clays and uh, trap. Um, yeah, so I did that as a shooting instructor and uh, worked the farm at the same time. And I uh, did that right up until we moved to Ecuador. Wow, that's a really, really long list. How old yeah. are you, 150 or 200 years old? Yeah, yeah, 200. <laughs> that's exactly okay, right. Okay. I look young for my age. <laughs> so, how long have you been uh, married with Lisa? Oh, let's see. I'm about 126 in married years. Now, we've been married uh, over 35 years now. Yeah, long time. All right. Next, um, any hobby? Yeah, yeah, we both have hobbies. I mean, of course, gardening is, you know, kind of a lifestyle and a hobby at the same time. Um, Lisa and I used to shoot a lot of competition skeet together. Cool. Uh, a lot of people don't know that about her. She's an excellent shot. And um, she and I would go to tournaments on the weekends and you know, shoot skeet tournaments, and I used to always shoot the World Skeet Championships for a lot of years, and wow. uh, won some medals, you know, won, won some money, and yeah, had fun with that. And, um, you know, we've obviously developed more hobbies through the years. Um, Lisa really loves to bake, um, and that's a big hobby of hers, and so she's carried that on here in Ecuador, and as you know, she even bakes for your restaurant. True. Yeah. And, um, the best I, ones, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I got into photography years ago with a guy I worked with at a software company. And um, he, he was a big photographer, and he got me into photography. And I bought a, um, one of the first um, SLR cameras I ever had. Uh, was, I think it was a Minolta. And so um, I shot uh, you know, quite a bit of photos and stuff with him, and he taught me a lot. And then I kind of rekindled that when I got here to Ecuador. And we started the YouTube channel and got into photography all over again. So this is a big hobby, you know, the YouTube thing is. And, you know, here we have, you know, we have other hobbies here too. But, but primarily, you know, between our dogs, uh, YouTube and photography, Lisa's baking, the gardening, we got our hands full. Full house. Yeah, it's full. So <clears throat> do you have kids? Yeah, we have one son, and um, he is married, and he has one child, uh, Ethan, our grandson. He's, uh, well, he's going to turn five in October. It, it's amazing. Yeah, it's been growing up so fast. It's happened so quickly, it seems like. Yeah. Hmm. Granddad, huh? Yeah, I'm a granddad. You betcha. Cool. cool. A happy granddad. A proud granddad. Proud granddad. Yeah, he's a smart kid. So, Joe, were you always a farmer? Not always. You know, when I, 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 my grandfather, my mother's father, he was a, what we used to call a truck farmer. You know, he grew vegetables and stuff. 
and they called those guys truck farmers back then. And he did that in Rising Star, Texas, where my mother was born. And then the depression hit, and so um, uh, he was having trouble making a living farming, and uh, my grandmother had a lot of uh, emphysema issues. So they had to move where the climate was a bit drier, and they, that forced them to move to New Mexico. At least that's where the wagon and the horse stopped. And uh, they loaded everything they had in a wagon, and a mule pulled the wagon. Huh. And um, so uh, there he went to work at a hospital in Roswell. And, uh, and that's, of course, where my mother and my aunt went to school there. Um, they had an older brother, Ray, who's passed away. He was um, a, a pilot in the Air Force and all during the war, and he was a glider pilot, too. He was shot down and captured some half a dozen times and escaped every time. Um, later worked for the CIA, I believe, you know, later in years. Right. But yeah, I wasn't always a farmer, but, um, you know, I, I came from a history of farming, you could say, but in high school, I got involved in what was called Future Farmers of America and the vocational ag, and I actually became a farmer through FFA. I raised, you know, show calves and sheep and stuff there. And then uh, 19 had my own farm in Texas, and we bought 78 acres and then uh, leased another 75 acres. And I raised Charley and Charley Angus crosses. Um, Charley was a French breed that um, we were proud to have full French cattle on our property. And uh, raised a lot of hay there. Um, and then, you know, years later we started um, the rabbit farm and really enjoyed uh, farming the rabbits and uh, that worked well. And then we started the farm in Liberty Hill, Texas, where we had the big greenhouses and we had sheep and donkeys and chickens and you yeah, name everything. it. Everything, yeah. And we really um, started focusing on smaller uh, acreage at that point. And um, today, you know, somebody asked in one of our questions uh, how big we, uh, the land was we had here. We have just two and a half acres here. And if you, there's some great books out there you can read about getting into farming. The cost of getting into farming in the U.S., the entry costs are just horrendous. And so that's why so many young people are not doing it. The cost of land, the cost of equipment. So what we are seeing, though, is a lot what we call urban farms, where people are starting farms on two acres or less. And so that is a huge movement in the U.S. right now. And so we've kind of carried forth that here. We've proven that on two and a half acres here, you can grow you know, enough food to feed your family and do pretty well. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So, Joe, how many states have you been in, this, in the U.S.? How many states have I lived in? Yes. in? Have I lived in or been in? Been. Been in. Um, I've been in every state. I've been in 48 states. I haven't been to Alaska and Hawaii, so um, I haven't been to either one of those. And in how many have you lived in? I've lived in, um, I guess, uh, four different states in the U.S. Four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We lived in New Mexico when I was a child for just a short period of time, and uh, of course lived in Texas, born in Alabama, and lived in New York State. Yeah. How many countries have you been? Oh, gosh, there's a lot of countries. Um, so uh, Mexico, obviously, um, all through the British West Indies, Grand Cayman, uh, Jamaica, Barbados. Um, I've been to all those countries in the British West Indies, pretty much all of them. I've uh, been to France. I've uh, been to Amsterdam. You know, I've been all through Belgium. I've um, uh, been to Germany. And I have been to uh, England. And... Um, of course, I've been to Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ended oh. up in Ecuador. Well, about 20, 20 countries. I would say that's, 20 countries, yeah. Yeah, that's mm. good. It's love. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what made you want to move to Ecuador? Well, I tell you, you know, I, I think I've told that story a few times, but um, we were really looking for a place that we could afford to retire early at a young age and live a really good lifestyle, but had to have a really good climate. And so much investigation, um, we, we visited Ecuador, we just absolutely fell in love with it. The climate was perfect, the people were wonderful, and um, it was affordable for us, and we could live a really good lifestyle here. So yeah, that's why we chose Ecuador. 
Hmm. Good health care too, by the way. So, talking about lifestyle, what is your lifestyle here? Wow, so our lifestyle has changed, I would say, quite a bit. Um, we've slowed down 100%. <laughs> we used to just work, work, work seven days a week, you know, work 14 hours, 16 hours a day all the time. And uh, so now, you know, we don't, we don't really have a schedule ever. Um, we just, you know, we get up to let the guys in that want to come work, you know. But, um, you know, we just get up whenever we get up. And um, Lisa has a little bit of schedule. She bakes cakes and pies two different days a week, you know. So that's, that's her only commitment is she always likes to take two days to bake her cakes and pies for people. And, um, you know, we like to go to Loja and, and go shop and hang out in Loja and go around to all the different parks and things. And here in Vilcabamba, you know, we go to a lot of birthday parties. Seems like there's constant birthday parties here. <laughs> and so we do that a lot. We go out to eat a lot. We have breakfast every Saturday morning at Bamboo, you know, and so usually have a table full of people that come to visit for breakfast. A lot of socializing goes on here. We've done some big parties here at the house. Um, we haven't done any lately, but we used to do some pretty big parties. You know, we'd have 35 people here sometimes. And uh, so, you know, a lot of social things uh, here. We've taken a lot of time for that. And, uh, you know, Lisa has her Bible studies she does. I used to go to some Bible studies here. I, I really don't anymore. I just kind of have my own alone time with God. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of our lifestyle is real laid back. You know, we're retired, um, so we don't like to commit to too many schedules for anything, you know. Yeah. We don't want to get too busy, make it seem like we're working again. And you forgot to mention shooting videos. That's right, shooting videos. We spend a lot of time with that, don't we? I mean, really, you help me a lot. We do a lot of time on videos. Uh, most people, I, I don't think, understand how much time is spent on a video. A 20-minute video, we probably have 12 hours worth of work into um, by the time we get set up on location, uh, get everything working properly, yep, uh, get it shot, you know, true. write out scripts for what we're going to do, and then uh, then we got to go edit everything. And sometimes, you know, none of it turns out. We have to reshoot it. Um, so it, you never know what the weather is going to be like either. Today the wind's picked up a little bit. But yeah, so by the time we edit it and then I do um, the subtitles, you know, in like 12 to 15 different languages, that, that takes a long time. So yeah, that's, but it's fun work. We enjoy it. You enjoy it, don't you? Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah, and I enjoy it. It's a great creative outlet. And um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's big fun. Yep. And you have a lot of birthday parties because you know a lot of people. That's Let's probably say, true. Probably whole town. <laughs> but you know, there's still a lot of people in town I haven't met yet. Um, I just met a new couple yesterday that just came from Canada and uh, they just moved here like two weeks ago. And uh, so met them at the farmer's market yesterday. Got, they got like four kids all stair-stepped, you know. So, yeah, we're always meeting new people, and there's people who've been in Vilcabamba longer than I have, and I still haven't met them. Uh, just there's a lot of different circles that you travel in here, I guess, you know. So, changing subject, Joe, what is your favorite so far? What's your favorite city in Ecuador? Well, um, you know, we haven't been to that many cities. We've probably only been to four cities here in Ecuador, um, but I would have to say Loja. You know, Loja is a nice size, around 250,000, would you say? Something like that? Um, I guess the city itself is only 150, 160,000. 160,000, mm -hmm. okay. And so, you know, it's just a nice size. It's walkable. And, uh, you know, I, we, I like to go to Loja and walk around. Santi and I have walked around in the rain and taking true. pictures. True. And uh, so, yeah, we like to... You know, Loja is just a great, relaxed city for me. Um, you get, you know, Cuenca has its really positive notes, and we like to go to Cuenca. After about three or four days, I'm pretty well done with Cuenca. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to live there, but it is a fun city to visit. Quito is so big, I, you know, it's like trying to eat an elephant, you know. 
it's kind of hard to take in all at once. You have to spend a lot of time to see keto, I think. You know Guayaquil? I have not been to Guayaquil, okay. no. Um, we've been to Machala, mostly to the visa office down there. Um, really humid, hot, yeah. crowded. So Loja then, huh? Yeah, favorite I think Loja is my favorite city. Cool, yeah. cool. And you have Hipiro in there. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And you know, I mean, Vilcabamba obviously is our favorite village or town. Um, so far, I would say, I don't know, I, I, Cerro Guro, man, it's just beautiful over there. I, I wouldn't want to live there because the weather can be kind of rainy and cold. But God, it's just green there all the time. And uh, the Cerro Guro people are kind of real unique. Yeah, it's pretty high up. And it's That's very right, high up. So. It really, but it's a pretty little, little town. All right. So, Joe, where do you see, where do you see yourself in five years? Wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, I, ideally, I think I see myself right here in this chair in five years. Um, All right. There's not much else that I really want to go do and see. Lisa and I want to travel some, you know, in Ecuador in the next five years. Um, you know, we're going to go to Zumba. We're going to go to Zamora. Cool. I've been to Zumba, but Lisa hasn't. And we want to go to some of the places up north. We want to go to Baño and uh, Baño's up there. We're going to go to the waterfalls there. And so there's some traveling we want to do in Ecuador. We want to go to Galapagos. Um, so I'd like to do that over the next five years. You know, shoot some cool videos up there. But I don't think, um, oh, we might travel out of the country. I, I, I want to go see my friend who just moved to Madeira, you know, in Portugal, and maybe go see him over there. Uh, but probably, probably not too much else traveling. I think we'll be right here, you know, enjoying this laid back lifestyle and perfect. And, you know, we have our groups, we have our homestead group here, and, you know, we hope that continues to grow, and that keeps me very busy, you know, kind of facilitating that group. And, uh, I don't know, maybe one day we'll have a photography club or something here that cool. we can all share pictures and have How coffee. How big is your group right now? Yeah. What's that? How big is your group right now? Well, the homestead group, uh, you know, we have 25, 30 that usually show up to our meetings. I think we have 50 members. Um, that's enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's pretty big. Cool, cool. And it's more of an educational group. Um, everybody comes and shares and talks about what they're doing. So if you travel around to Ecuador, are you going to make videos for your channel? Yeah, we will. We'll make videos for the, for the channel. Um, you know, that'll be part of it. But, you know, mostly we just want to experience more parts of Ecuador. Okay, cool. And... Uh, you know, we've got some friends over in El Tambo um, who have a really unique farm over there. And we need to get over there and shoot that, you know, and that's, that's just on the Absolutely. way to the airport. That's not that far away. And so, yeah, you know, I mean, you and I went to Canara and visited with Miguel. I mean, that's all just fun yes, stuff. Yes, we had so much ventures. Yeah, true. Yeah. Within 30 minutes of right where we're sitting, there's so much to see and do yep. here. There's a lot. And, of course, different climates, you know, different microclimates. And yeah. So, Joe, I'm out of questions. All right. So, well, and I don't like so talking much. about myself, so <laughs> <laughs> we did good getting this far. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, Santi, thanks for coming out and doing this with us today, man. Appreciate it. No worries, my friend. And you folks, if you enjoyed this at all, give it a thumbs up. We appreciate all your subscriptions, all your comments. And don't hesitate to leave some more. We'll be happy to answer what we can. Ciao for now.